AMD has been firing products from a Gatling gun for the last month or so, and their latest round includes ammunition in the GPU department. The Polaris line sees its second deployment in the RX 500 GPUs, including the 580 and 570 that launched today. These are refinements over the initial Polaris launch, but architecture remains entirely unchanged. The RX 500 series ships with higher stock clocks than the 400 cards, effectively serving as a pre-overclock with some additional OC headroom on top of that. This includes an extra 25 millivolts overvoltage that board partners can opt into, like MSI has done for the RX 580 Gaming X that we're reviewing today. We'll post our RX 570 review tomorrow. Before that, this coverage is brought to you by the Computex Conference, which runs from May 30th to June 3rd in Taipei, Taiwan this year. Computex is the biggest event of the year for PC hardware and technology, where we preview the newest prototypes before they come to market. We highly recommend attending or following this event online for industry professionals and enthusiasts. Learn more at the link in the description below. As stated, our RX 570 review goes live tomorrow. We also have the XFX 580 that we'll be looking at shortly this week sometime. This one's pretty cool actually for a few reasons, but we'll get to that soon enough. First thing to do here though is to clear up some misconceptions and confusion that we saw online pertaining to the RX 500 launch. There were some photos going around our slides that showed what looked like a new reference cooler. It doesn't exist, it's not a thing. So the slides that were going around, we saw them, Scott Watson came by and did some videos with us and he presented us a slideshow at that time. It included the slide that you all likely saw and may, many people were speculating consisted of plans for a new reference cooler that was not a blower cooler. In fact, that was just a slide saying that this is gonna be a partner launch, so what does that mean? That means that people like MSI, XFX, Gigabyte, the AIB partners basically dictate everything within reason on the Polaris refresh, more or less. So these cards, the 580s, are uh, partner-only models. There is no reference RX 580. There will be no reference RX 570 as far as we're aware currently. And that means that the coolers, the reference coolers, don't exist in the capacity that was being uh, rumored on the internet. So this is what you get. You get the AIB partner coolers and that's it. That means that we'll be testing these individually and doing reviews individually of the cards as they come out rather than just a blanket 580 review using the reference model with updates later. The clocks will be dictated by the partners this time around. So overall what we're seeing is basically a pre-OC on something like an RX 480. The frequency out of the box for these cards versus the previous cards is higher than both the reference and most of the partner models. For the MSI card that we have, it's got the twin Frozer cooler that you see pretty much on all of their cards at this point. The stock clock out of box is about 1367 megahertz peak, though it tends to average around 1340, 1350, somewhere in there. And then if you max out the power slider without touching anything else to 150% of power, uh, that gets us up to 1393 megahertz fixed, just constant. So we're looking at just under 1400 megahertz for out of box performance when the power target is maxed. And then for overclocking, uh, things of note would be the extra 25 millivolts that we can get at least on this card. AMD permits it. It is up to the board partners to actually leverage that. So in Wattman, the utility, this one will go up to 1200 millivolts. In reality, that translates to about 1.26 or 1.256 volts and uh, stock without the power target offset, it's somewhere around 1.22 volts. So you have some room there to play with overclocking. We'll get into our OC stepping chart in a minute. And the rest of the 580 series in terms of clocks is going to be more or less around the 1360 mark to 1390 mark without any overclocks by the user. Other than that, there aren't any real differences to speak of here. It's still Polaris 10. It's more refined and mature as a process, but the gains are entirely from increases in clock rate and idle power management. Granted, load power is still higher than the RX 480 because the clock is higher. As for prices, the cheapest RX 580 8GB card will be $220, and that is an RX 580 Gaming made by Gigabyte. There are 4 gigabyte, as in 4GB, not the brand, 4GB models nearing the $190 mark. And then there are a couple of the RX 570 models around $170 to $180 for price. Our review today will be looking at one of the better RX 580s, the Gaming X, priced at $245. And then our XFX model that we're reviewing later this week is about $250. For our primary comparison, we're looking at a GTX 1060 SSC. This is an EVGA card priced at 250. 
So it's a pretty head-to-head -head match with the Gaming X, 245, 250, then they have some kind of deal. It's basically the same price. We also, in maybe two of the charts, have some data from the Gaming X 1060 model. That one tends to be a bit more expensive, clocked a bit higher. It's Gaming X to Gaming X, so we left it in for those charts. And that's really it. So there's no big architecture discussion here like we normally have with a new video card launch. If you are curious about the Polaris architecture, watch our initial RX 480 review or read the article because it's the same. Nothing has changed. No point in rehashing all of that. The content was already refined and good when we put it out there and there's no changes. So this is a refresh. There are faster clocks. That means we can expect an increase in benchmark performance. And let's start off with power. Before getting into the power stuff, uh, we do have an OC stepping chart to clarify what the clocks were when we went into the power testing and game testing. Put that on the screen now. That shows the uh, process of failure and success on different clocks for the 580 Gaming X specifically. If you want to see the other numbers, you can go to the article. And then for the rest of the testing methodology, Again, article linked in the description below will contain all of that. So we've got the thermal testing there. We have the outline for power testing, gaming benchmarks, all that stuff defined in the article. Power has a direct correlation with thermals, and so it's important to establish a baseline power measurement in some real use cases. Our power testing is done at the wall, which means that this is a measurement of total system power draw, not individual GPU draw by the rails, and that means we mostly care about the card-to-card -card deltas. For power tests, we're using two games configured to very high or extreme graphic settings, 3D Mark, Fire Strike Extreme, and Idle for desktop draw. Idle, the RX 580 Gaming X system, consumes about 76 watts, which is a reduction of a few watts from the RX 480 stock configuration. This is expected. AMD's tuning on its 14 nanometer process has brought down power consumption specifically when idle and when viewing things like movies or other low load GPU tasks. The RX 580 system draws about 8.6% more power idle than the 70 watt 1060 system. Moving on to 3D Mark Firestrike, we see that the synthetic benchmark posts the RX 580 Gaming X stock system at 281 watts with the overclocked variant at 1.26 volts, now drawing 301 watts for an increase in power consumption of 7%. The RX 480 Gaming X system draws 248 watts with its overclocked counterpart at 270 watts when running a 1375-ish megahertz on the core. The RX 580 Gaming X consumes approximately 13% more power than the RX 480 Gaming X when both are stock. That's obviously not true for idle, different story there. The EVGA GTX 1060 SSC runs the same workload with a total system draw in 3D Mark of 202 watts stock or 219 overclocked. The RX 580 consumes approximately 39% more power than the GTX 1060 SSC. For Honor is one of our more load intensive games, landing the 580 systems at 310 watts stock or 334 watts overclocked for an increase in power consumption of about 12% over the RX 480. The 1060 SSC runs around 218 watts stock and 234 OC, resulting in the RX 580 consuming about 42% more power when both are stock. Ghost Recon info shows more of the same. We've got that on the chart as well if you want to see how that game consumes power. It's a bit different from For Honor, but the scaling is more or less linear. We're going to get straight into game testing now. If you want to see the other charts for things like frequency over time and temperatures, you can check the content below. Let's start off with Mass Effect Andromeda. At 1080p, the RX 580 Gaming X stock card runs an average frame rate of about 79 FPS with 1% lows at 62 and 0.1% lows at 57. Frame times here are relatively consistent and in line with other results. Versus the stock RX 480 Gaming X, this is an improvement of about 5.4% stock to stock or about 6.8% when looking at the overclocked 580 versus the overclocked 480. An overclocked 580 is basically an overclocked overclocked 480. It's, just, it's the same architecture, the frequency is the only difference here. The overclocked RX 580 outperforms the Fury X in this particular test and performs about 2.4% behind the GTX 970 or about 7% behind the GTX 1060 SSC which operates frame rates of 89, 68, and 64. Overclocking the 1060 SSC gets it to 95 FPS average, just ahead of the 1060 Gaming X from MSI. The overclocked RX 580 performs about 13% behind the GTX 1060 SSC, with the stock RX 580 performing about 11% behind the stock GTX 1060 SSC. Strictly for point of reference, the RX 470 runs at around 63 FPS in this test, the R9 390X at about 70, 
and the GTX 1070 SC at about 119 FPS. We'll have 570 numbers for you shortly. Here's a look at the stock clock frame times of the RX 580 versus the GTX 1060 SSC, just to help give an idea of latency between frames. But moving on swiftly to 1440p, the RX 580 Gaming X stock is now running at 51 FPS average with the same consistent frame times as most of the other results in the stack. The stock RX 580 is evenly matched with our overclocked 480 Gaming X, or about 4% ahead of the stock RX 480. The RX 580 OC operates about 5.3% faster than the stock version, now at 54 FPS average, which leaves the 580 cards flanking the 970. Looking to the direct competitors in the GTX 1060 class, the SSC stock runs at 57 FPS average, putting it about 16% ahead of the stock RX 580, with the overclocked SSC card running about 13.6% ahead of the overclocked RX 580 card. Just for perspective, we'll quickly highlight the R9 390X, the R9 Fury X, and the GTX 1070 cards on the chart to give an idea of where things fall. Time to move on to Ghost Recon at Wildlands, and then we'll get to Doom with Vulcan. At 1080p, the RX 580 Gaming X lands at 58 FPS average, roughly the same as the RX 480 Gaming X, with just some difference in the frame times. As for the GTX 1060 SSC, the Pascal card lands at 67 FPS average stock, marking it in a lead of about 15.5%. Overclocking the 1060 SSC gives it some trouble in the 0.1% department, but we see a boost to 72 FPS average, and the 580 Gaming X moves to 61 FPS average. Moving on to 1440p, the RX 580 Gaming X runs around 46 FPS average with the GTX 1060 at 48 FPS average, and increasing the resolution has shrunken the gap between the two devices, with the 1060 SSC primarily pulling away when overclocking. Moving now to Doom at 4K, the RX 580 Gaming X lands at around 44 FPS average alongside the RX 480 Gaming X, just behind the 980 Ti and just ahead of the GTX 1060 SSC. The RX 580 stock leads the EVGA 1060 SSC stock by about 8.3%, with the overclocked SSC showing some stability issues in its frame time consistency. The RX 580 overclocked gets up to 50 FPS, an improvement over the stock 580 of about 11.7%. Let's move on to a more realistic resolution of 1440p. The RX 580 Gaming X stock card runs around 91 FPS average, again posting an uninteresting 1.5% climb from the RX 480's position. The 580 stock outperforms the 1060 SSC by about 12%, with the 1060 SSC running at 81 FPS average and with similar frame times and lows to the 580 Gaming X. Overclocking the SSC gets it to 87 FPS average, while the overclocked RX 580 Gaming X hits about 100 FPS average at 1440p. The 580 OC leads the 1060 OC by about 15% here. And looking now at 1080p, the RX 580 Gaming X runs at 140 FPS average, with 1% lows at 106 and 0.1% at 104. The 1060 SSC stock runs at 123 average with lows at 92 and 90. This puts the RX 580 stock in a lead of about 14.3% with the overclocked 580 leading the overclocked SSC by about 14.4%. Playing for honor at 1080p with extreme settings, the RX 580 Gaming X places around 93 FPS average with frame times tightly timed. The GTX 1060 SSC performs similarly, running an average FPS of 94 with lows at 83 and 77 to the 580, 77 and 73. Overclocking in this game always goes over poorly unless we really minimize the OC. To get anything stable or resembling stable on the GTX 1080 Ti Aorus card, for example, we had to set the offset to just 20 MHz. Not that impressive. Ignore the overclock numbers here as the game is unplayable and abnormally sensitive to overclocks. We're only putting them here in this first chart so that it's understood so that you can see both the 1060 and 580 are basically unplayable with their respective OCs unless we really, really drop them down to near stock. Back to the focus of the chart, the 580 Gaming X is outperformed by the 1060 SSC by about 1.7%, with the 580 Gaming X running about 8% faster than the 480 Gaming X. At 1440p, the RX 580 Gaming X runs a frame rate of about 60 FPS average, making it 4.7% faster than the RX 480's 57 FPS average. The GTX 1060 SSC operates at 61 FPS average, leading the 580 by about 2.1%. Nothing significant or exciting between either device. They are both good performers when operating at stock frequencies in For Honor and they are imperceptibly different. Sniper Elite is our final game for the video version of this review. We only currently have 4K numbers for this one, but it does give a good look at an intensive DX12 scenario. 
The RX 580 Gaming X runs at 40 FPS average here with the overclocked variant at 44 average. That puts the 580 GX about 13 to 14% ahead of the 1060 SSC. Both are overclocked and stock for that number. 13 to 14% applies in each case. We're trading blows between titles, it appears, and the synthetics in the form of 3D Mark, Ashes to some extent, and other tests can be found linked in the article below. This isn't really a deep review because it's not a new architecture, so it's a bit weird. This is a mid-cycle refresh between Now and Vega and aims to pull the 400 series off the shelves and replace it with 500 series cards that are roughly the same price or slightly less in some cases. So that's a good thing overall, it's just the launch from what we've seen thus far is kind of meh. There's nothing really special about it, but it's not bad either. If you just bought an RX 480, for example, and you're feeling a bit salty, take solace in the fact that overall we're looking at percent gains of about 5% if you kind of average all the titles together. Sometimes it's a little more, but overclocking the 480 basically gets you to a stock 580 in at least some of the games we've tested, though you can see it in the synthetics as well in the article. So overall, it's a couple percent gain over the 480. Not bad, it's just it's not Vega. And of course, people have been waiting for that for a long time, so it's not gonna, uh, nothing will excite people in the GPU department until Vega launches, I think is, is fair to say for the most part. So this is not targeted at people who already have systems built and who don't need something unless it's a major launch. This is not an upgrade. It is a new GPU purchase. If you haven't built a system for a while, and uh, you're looking for something that would be a 480, but now those are basically gonna be killed and replaced with the 580s. That's what we're looking at. In terms of the 1060 versus the 580 debate, the best thing I can say is look at the numbers and figure out what matches for the games that you play because they do trade in a couple of titles. DX11 titles, the 1060 tends to be a bit ahead. That's really not news for Nvidia. The Vulcan title, Doom being the seminal example, allows the 580 to lead the 1060 by a good bit. And then in some of the DX12 12 titles, we see trading. So in Ashes of the Singularity, they're roughly the same. In Sniper Elite, AMD tends to lead by a bit, or at least over the 1060 SOC from EVGA. So that's what we're looking at. Power is another big thing to look at if that's something you care about. The 1060 is quite a bit more power efficient. If you don't care at all about it, then whatever. I guess the testing was for nothing. But if you care about power, which you should, because it correlates directly with other things like heat, Check the numbers, see if they match with your build budget and things like that, uh, and your needs in terms of ambient heat output and all of that stuff. So uh, this is a scenario where the 1060 and the 580 pass the trophy back and forth. There is nothing exciting here to say for that. I apologize, I suppose, but it's not a bad launch. It's just not exciting. You can learn more at the link in the description below for the article, which has some additional testing. And other than that, thank you for watching. You can subscribe for more as always. Check us out in other videos coming out this week, including the review of this card, which is a 570. This one I'm a bit more interested in from a market stack standpoint. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.